Sorry about the little delay. So I just had to load up a couple of different symbols. So anyway, I'm going to talk about uh, pretty much any stocks that you're looking at and you want to talk about. There's a lot of good stocks that are moving in the market right now that we are trading here in our trading room. And what I'm going to do is at the end of this presentation, I'm going to invite all of you to come and join the trading room so you can see what it's all about and how we trade. Now, for some of you who don't know who I am, um, you know, I've been doing this for over 30 years. I'm one of the original Soz Bandits day traders that started. You probably see me. I mean, I, mean, I know David for so many years now. I've been on this for, I don't know, it's probably since the day he started. So, it's, it, you know, and I'm always trying to educate the people. I want to teach you all how to focus on what's going on in the markets because one of the big things everyone has to understand, it's not about making money. It's about controlling those losses. It's about knowing when you're wrong, admit when you're wrong, all that stuff. Now, um, I'm going to uh, go over a couple of things on what, what I call big block orders, iceberg orders, and I'd uh, like to see how everyone would be able to kind of react to certain stocks that you're in. I know Ed and Samuel, you're putting a couple of stocks in there really quick. I mean, there's a lot more in here. You guys can come out there. I mean, I didn't, you know, anyone that's out there, just put your chat in there and tell me what you're looking at. I'll be happy to look at it because to be a good trader, you can't focus on the past. I'm going to teach you how to focus on the future. And that's the big thing. So I'll just start off just really quick with who the first one, Samuel brought two stocks in here, um, P -A, uh, PXD. And mm -hmm. Now, looking at this stock, PXD, the kind of trader I am, I would never trade the stock, okay? And now, listen, some of you might get a little insulted. Please don't get insulted um, out of all respect. I want to teach you all how to trade today's market action. And here, and I'll tell you why. First of all, the stock is a $220 stock, okay? Now, I don't trade options. I bet there's great options on it. But why would I trade this stock, PDX? When I could trade a stock like this stock, Carvana, if some of you haven't seen this one, and just yesterday the stock was as low as $10, and it ran all the way to 20 It's almost a 100% mover, okay? These are the stocks that we're looking at. And, and, and by the way, that's just only one. I'll give you another one that we traded last couple of days, maybe SMSGM. If you guys saw this one, this stock about three days ago was at $7 ran up to a high of like 25 and then in the after in the pre-market it went as high as almost $80 a share. These are the things that we like to trade. Now, we don't need to kill it, make all this big money on it, but when you talk about risk to reward, um you know, as a trader, this is a business, right? And if I was in the real estate market, I'm not buying a house for myself as much as I, whatever it is. I'm buying it to make money with it. It's like saying, I will never buy that, that house. I would never live there. I'm like, what do you think? We're not living there. I'd rather buy a, a, a $200,000 house to make $50,000 than buy a million-dollar house to make $50,000. You know? So that's way to look at it. Now, another stock that you did bring up, uh, DVN. And by the way, I don't want to go into great detail on certain stocks because I'll show you a little bit more. But if I see something that I like – then I will do my research because as a trader, you got three things you have to focus on. Tradable, trend, and trap. Those are the three things that I focus on. And so far, you know, um, Samuel, both of those stocks that you gave me failed, and which is 50% of the failure rate, is that they're not tradable because they're too expensive, they're too risky, they're too volatile, they got big spreads, you know, all that stuff. They don't have the good volatility in them like some of the other stocks. And that's the reason why. Now, by the way, I only see other, I, I only see Ed brought in, he brought in ESPR. Now, I know the stock um, ESPR. We traded it. Um, stock had some good movement right around uh, when it was back in December. It was at $5, had a nice little rally, but it's on a downtrend. It's only traded 700,000 shares. It's not really doing anything. You know, it's more looks more of a short than more of a long right now and not something that I would consider maybe doing as a day trade or even doing as a swing trade. OK, Roger, uh, Raji came out with a stock. He's got uh, DOCU. Now, this one, DocuSign is moving up pretty nicely. OK, one issue with DocuSign, it's still expensive, though. It's $66. Now, 
at least this stock has some good movement, some good volatility. Now, would I trade this? Probably not. Because if you look at the tier sizes, all hundreds. Everybody see that? 100, 100, 100, 100. That means that these, these exchanges, everybody out there is looking to buy 100 shares of stock. So I like to see more people looking to buy 1,000 shares, 2,000 shares. Um, I don't know if you realize, but 100 shares is $6,600. It's not the 66,000 you might think of. But with that said, you know, listen, I'll play with it. And let me, um, let me just show you what I look at on DocuSign. Now, what we do here at Cybertrain University, and I'm going to show you really quick right here. Um, these are the stocks that we're looking at right now. Now, this is the trading room. I'm going to invite everybody in. Um, these are all our traders. These are our instructors. You see them all here, Josh, Gina, Rich, John, Alex, me. These are all the instructors, and we have some other ones that are, are off right now because we have certain times. But look at all the traders in the room on the left, okay? These are all traders that you're going to be uh, going to meet, all right? And uh, right now, you can see how instructors are working with them. We don't have any audio going on right now. We do that the first hour and the last hour. But the stock that we're going to be there looking at right now is if you look right here is LCID, which we'll come back to it. But before we do that, I want to talk about Raju's stock. So we trade on something called level four. Now, what is level four? Level four is basically where we see all the institutions, all the high frequency trades, all the algorithms, maybe the dark pools that you see. So we're, I'm going to pop over this level four right here. And what I'm looking at is what you see right here. And uh, let me just go back and get a little more data. All right, just loading up. Okay. So looking at your um, DocuSign, you could see that there are these big, big ice uh, volume red lines right here. It's called a heat map. These are orders that are out there. And if you look out there, when 9.30 started, right here, you could see that there was, oh, probably about two, 3,000 there, two, 3,000. A lot of resistance levels right around this $66.50. You had some resistance here at 65.40, but there is a lot at 66. And when I go down, you could see right here, you got a 20,000 share buyer right around this support levels right here. So not only can you day trade it, but you'll see a little bit more on a swing trade. So looking at this, you know, if I had a game plan, stock looks really strong. It, it looked like it took out some of the sellers at $66.50. Um, next biggest resistance level is around 70. But if it does trend down, I would be focused at, at 64 and 62.50. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question. Now, um, no, no, uh, Nasty, I'm a different company. I'm from Cyber Trading University. That's what we've been in business for over 30 years. You can look us on the internet. We got a five star rating on Google, A plus rating the Better Business Bureau. Uh, we're endorsed by every brokerage firm in the industry ThinkOrSwim, TradeStation, MetaStock. You know, I can go on and on and on. Um, but what I really focus on is more stock trade, not more options. And I teach more and more on the the future of orders, then work more on indicators. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, are these selling uh, trading pro, uh, subscriptions? Now, you know what? I'm not selling you anything, okay? I'm not going to sell you anything. Um, my goal, the reason why I'm here today is, you know, David wanted me to teach you our strategy, what we've been doing here for so long. But I'm going to invite every one of you to come into the trading room for about a week to see this live in the market, okay? Now, um, but before I do that, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to talk to my staff and waste their time. Um, I want to make sure this is something that this is what you're doing and what you're probably doing is the wrong way. And maybe you should be doing it. You know, maybe this is a way that maybe makes a little bit more sense to you. And that's why Dave runs these great events. Now, another couple of stocks that have come up across the board. Uh, Patrick brought up TGTX. Okay. Now, this stock has obviously been a pretty good stock also. Um, we did see the stock also yesterday, had a nice little pop. She's kind of like doing what's called a funnel effect right here. You can see I had a nice little move from 18, uh, 16 to about 1880. 
So it's, you know, it's kind of building what we call a funnel. And, you know, but overall, um, it's got a, it's been doing pretty well in the swing trade. I would be more focused if, if you got some resistance levels around 20 and you have to understand that with those sellers in the past, are they still there in the future? So Patrick, to answer, Patrick Kelly, to answer your question, what is your game? What is your, first of all, why did you give me that stock TGTX? Do you own it? Do you, and if you do, what price do you own it at? What is your game plan? Because that is everyone's biggest problem. So maybe Patrick, you could tell me that. What is your game plan? Do, first of all, do you own the stock? Yes or no? That's really the question. Okay. So as he's posting up that question, does anyone else have any stocks that you want me to look at? Remember, if you don't ask, I can't tell you. <laughs> That's where it comes down to it. Uh, bet Meta. We're going to talk about Meta too. Meta really had some good earnings yesterday, but it's really kind of died. All right. I'm still waiting for Patrick's qu question. He's not answering me. So we're just waiting for that. And uh, Vet, you know, it's not really going anywhere. 600,000 shares, not really a stock I would talk about. Uh, Meta, we would not trade Meta. Meta had a really good run up, had some good earnings yesterday. It started making big move. But once again, let me get to this, this point. Not that you can't make money with Meta. But why would I go out there and trade a $190 stock to make whatever a day's pay is when I could do something a lot less expensive, okay? Now, one of you brought up Carvana, CV, um, CVNA. Now, we sold, I got out of Carvana uh, right around 1850, okay? And once again, if you don't believe me, you can log into my trading room. I'll bring it up here. I'll even show you if you don't believe me. Where are we? Oh, I logged out. So you could see like right here, these are all our, our traders. If you look here at the timeline, right here, 950. Um, you can see Carvana, like we're talking about, we've been trading, we're trading Snapchat, Chip, and Carvana. These are all students on the left. On the right are our traders. And you can see right here, the alert at, at 1055, we, had, we, we post up alerts, which you all will get, of like what's happening. It. And the big thing we do, just to let you know, we don't tell anybody what to buy and sell because that's illegal. What we do is we kind of show you what's moving in the market. And then you obviously need to know when to hit the button. But let me tell you a little about Carvana. So um, if, you, if anybody listens, I'm live every morning on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. We do a full broadcast. Uh, we stream our, our, our meetings every morning and every afternoon. And I, I want to go to Carvana and show you because you can, the reason why I bring that up because it's recorded. So if you don't believe me what I say, you can always back check and see what I said. So We've been trading Carvana since $4.50, all right? And let me just bring up Carvana here because Carvana was a really cool looking stock. Just get some data here. So Carvana uh, got halted a couple of times today. And what was very cool about this stock is this. What makes a stock to go up and down? Now, let me just see how educated all of you are. If you could answer that one little question. What makes stocks go up and go down? Raju, you're right. Anyone else? Is Raju the only one that's here today? He's the only one who knows the answer. Come on, guys. What are you afraid of? Listen. Let me be, please don't take this against me. Uh, you know, I was raised this way. If you don't know, you shouldn't be trading. Do you want to lose all your money? Do you really want to blow up your account? You think I'm here because David and I, I'm here to help you. If you can't answer this question, you should not be trading. 
You should not be trading. It's not fear or greed. Samuel, you're right. Um, Mike, you're right. Okay. Well, I want to talk about eggs. I, own, I actually, I have a backyard chicken. So believe me, I got to worry about people stealing my eggs now. It's all about supply and demand, buyers and sellers. That's it. Okay. So now look at this really quick. Let me show you something. Okay. See how the stock started at 930 this morning and it hit a resistance level. Did you see that big iceberg order? Okay. That is almost a million shares looking to be sold right there. A million, a million, not 200, not 100, like, like one of you brought up that stock or, uh, like, you know, um, or in DocuSign or whatever. You're talking a million shares. And what happened? It, it hit $20 and it came all the way back down to 16, okay? And look, he's still there. He added to his order. And now you're getting orders out here popping up. Look at this right here, 270,000 shares. 300,000, quarter million, 260,000. And then you got 2,000, 7,000, 5,000. You're talking about big 18, you know, um, $330 million worth of stock. Okay. This is not chump change. Now, let me tell you what my mentor taught me. And I hope you listen to me very carefully. It doesn't matter what you think. If you're going into a trade and you think you know what's going on, you're going to blow up your account. Listen, you might be a nice person and we probably have a beer together, but you know what? I don't care what you tell me, how much you know about the stock. I don't care if you, if you work for the company. All I know is I got close to over two, almost a million shares, maybe even more, two million shares out there being sold from $18 to $20. So I'm out. And guess what? Maybe all of you can answer this question. What's the stock doing right now? Is it going up or is it going down? What does it look like to you? What does that stock look like it's doing to you? Is that going up or down? It's going down. Okay. Did I, by the way, did I lose anybody? Now, some of you are going to ask me this. Why 20? Why not? Why, why, how did it go up that high? Well, I'll tell you how. If you look over here, first of all, Carvana was a $360 stock. It was one of those great, you know, it, it was one of the, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, uh, some people are calling it the virus stock. Some people are calling it, you know, the, uh, the stay home stocks. You know, I don't know. What, I don't know what. I don't know what they're calling this new this rally. I mean, listen. You heard about the financial crisis. You heard about the the uh, the dot com crisis. You heard about Hurricane Sandy. I don't know. They got so many names about with this whole virus thing that came out, which made these markets go down and go up. But anyway, why is the stock going? You know, backed off at that price is because of this. If I zoom over here, you will see that right here at those highs. These, these lows right here. See these lows right there? From like June, July, August, you see the lows right there? 1980, what's the low here? $20, okay, 1940. Now you have to understand what is predicated from the past is, you know, is not always indicative of the future, okay? So you might know there's resistance levels there and we have the game plan but you want to confirm that by looking at what's happening right now. If those same orders are there, well, why are they here? Because they should be here. Because they're not, that's how the stock breaks out. And you got to remember, this stock, ladies and gentlemen, was literally $4.50 not even about a month ago. And from $4.50 to $20 is, I don't know, 500%. Not bad. Yeah, you know what, Rajita, you're right. And that is, it's not just a consolidating, and there's a whole thing that I don't have the time to explain what that actually means, the consolidation and everything. Maybe you know a little bit more, and that's great that you brought that up because uh, it does have something to do with it. But once again, 
in the last four days, look, I went from $6 to $10 to 11 to 14 up to 20. I mean, that's a great move, right? But the thing is, it's not about the winner that matters. Because how many of you here made money on the stock, but until you sell it, means nothing, right? You got to sell that stock, right? So you know how many people like still own it? And like, oh, is it going to go back? I Maybe mean, it's going back to 300 where I own it at. This is, you know, this is like peanuts to them. People got destroyed. So it could be a short squeeze. It could be a lot of those big things. Uh, NASA says, uh, are you only doing tech analyst, analytics, uh, analyzing based trades? Um, well, I'm not doing more tech analysting. I'm doing more, I'm analyzing orders. That's Listen, um, I was a market maker on Wall Street. That's what I used to do, all right? Before I was a successful trader, I was a very successful loser because I didn't work for somebody. I didn't learn from somebody. I thought I was like 99% of the people in, this, in the trading industry think, ah, let me try doing my own. And if I like it, then I'll go work for somebody. It doesn't work that way. Um, once I got myself a mentor and I actually worked for someone, I should have never made my first trade because the difference, what, what you're learning today that I learned 30 years ago is that the data that we're looking at right here, and, it's, it, and it can almost guarantee you that most of you probably would not even get in, do, in, do it this way. Because when I started, I was 22 years old. I had to pay $1,000 a month for this data. $1,000, okay? Now, if I asked any of you here to dish out $1,000 right now, you'd probably be the same percentage that, would, that was 20 years ago. And back then, $1,000 was like paying $4,000 a month for this stuff. Today, it costs you 15 bucks. And you know what? I still can't get people to buy. I don't understand like, you know, like there's so much software out there, but if you want to trade like a Wall Street market maker, like the traders you see on the floor, the big prestigious traders, you know, you know like when I got introduced into this industry, my mentors always taught me, say, hey, listen, you want to make the six figure of trading? Nothing's for free. I'm not going to sign you to, you know, go out there and trade. And we think this is free. You think, you think NASDAQ worked for free? You think the New York Stock Exchange built that nice, beautiful building and able to keep it running in Manhattan for, for giving it for free? So you have to understand something, traders. If you're looking for free stuff, you're not going to make money in trading. You know, And I'm, I'm just telling you point blank. So if you want to do it, you got to do it right. Um, and that's why you know, David is having all these presenters come in here because you basically have to interview all of us and see, oh, you know what? I kind of like that, but didn't work out. Oh, I like this. It makes more sense. Because I know some of you are going to probably not get it, what I'm doing, and that's okay. By the way, there's a nice stock that's moving right now uh, that they're trading in our trading room. Uh, I'm going to bring up this one. They're trading a stock called Lucy. Um, L-U-C-Y. Yeah, Lucy had a really nice stock. Look at this gorgeous. Wow. Things up 220%. I'll show you right now. They're in it right now. You can see it. They're talking about Lucy. You see it right there? All right. Just show you what we're doing. And Lucy just had a nice little move from $4 all the way to $5. Okay. Well, we're going to get to that. I'm going to tell you how to sign up. Don't worry about it. We got, I'm not done yet. I got about another 20 minutes to talk about. So I got a lot more to kind of get you excited. Now, the question I have for you, all of you, is why is Lucy going up? Well, Raji, does that matter, pump and dump? You know what I mean? They're all, a lot of these could be pump and dumps. Who cares? But if, if you think there's something illegal going on, you should not be trading. The only thing is you got to know how to play the game. Okay? Uh, Lucy is right here on the big percentage gainers. See it right here? It's the biggest percentage gainer on the NASDAQ market right there. See right there, Lucy? That's where, that's where we found it. Now, the question is, what you have to ask yourself is, is it going higher? Like my, like, my question to you is, why did it go up? Why did the stock go up? Why did it go from $1.50 to $4, and now it's going from 4 to 5 
Once again, if you can't answer this question, you should not be trading. So not all at once. How, why is this thing going up? Muhammad says news. No, that's not the answer. Well, Raj, you know, Raj, I like you got a lot of questions here, and, and I'm glad that you're asking them. But the thing is this, um, if you want to be a good – because I know, listen, people think that day trading is not for everybody. It, first of all, if you, can't, if you can't understand the day trading part of it, you think that's hard, swing trading is that much harder. And if you think that's harder, options is 10 times harder. If you want to be a good options trader, it's the movement in the stock that makes an option move. Okay? And I don't care – you know, said, I, I'll, any option trader will tell you that. He says, yeah, well, we think op, that's why they call it options. It's another option, okay? But getting to this, why is it going up? Jerry, you're right. Mike, you're right. Patrick, you're right. Buyers, buyers and sellers, okay? Now, do you see buyers and sellers on a chart? Anyone see buyers and sellers out here? No. Absolutely not. Okay, you want to go back further? Do you see any buyers and sellers in that? Do you see buyers and sellers? No, I don't see anyone. Okay, so how do we know why the stock is going up? Well, there's a couple of things that we got to teach you. Anybody here use time and sales and see all the transactions that are taking place? Like where the orders, are they going off on the bid? Are they going off in the offer? Um, let me hop over here. And let me look at the orders. Well, you see why. So we got going on over here. So if you look right here, oh my God, this is like taking candy from a little kid. This is like, this is such an easy pickings here. So you could see that there was a lot of resistance levels right here. There were big, big sellers right around this 440. Everybody see that little red line? A lot of orders, 4,000, 40,000, 3,000, a lot of big orders out there. So what happened, it went to that resistance. And what happened here, anyone ever know what a breakout is? Anyone ever heard what's called a breakout? Nazik, listen, I'm not going to tell you what platform I'm using, okay? It's irrelevant. Um, you're not qualified to, to even buy it right now. You'll actually do more harm than good. So what I need you to do is let me show you how it works first before you go out there and, oh, I want to buy this. I want to buy that. I'm not here to sell you anything, all right? I'm just trying to show you why most people lose money in the market because of ignorance and they're being cheap. Okay, so don't worry about, and I know no one here is being cheap because you wouldn't be here in the first place. Um, but I'm trying to show you, what, you know, why people fail and why all of us are going to beat the people. Because remember, this is a sport, right? By the way, anyway, people, anyone follow football? Anybody here follow football? We all know the Super Bowl is coming up next week, right? Um, I don't know if you know this. I found out this morning. There are two brothers. For the first time competing each other in a Super Bowl, there's one player on the Eagles and one player on the Chiefs. Did you guys know that? Okay. Now, my thing I'm trying, the reason why I bring this up is that do you think if I went up against my brother that I'm, that I'm getting paid to, oh, he's my brother. I can't hurt him. My mom's going to he'll kill me. You know what I mean? Like, you think, you think he gets paid to do that? You think he's going to, I mean, like, you, you got to remember. There's a winner and there's a loser in trading. You have to know who the winner is. Like, you don't want to be the loser, right? The winner is the mom, but the mom doesn't want any of these kids to get hurt, right? But you didn't get paid to, go, to get to the Super Bowl, not to, not to let your, your, your brother say, oh, I can't take his legs out. I can't hurt him. I mean, I'm not going to hit him or go half speed. I, that's what I get paid for. And that's why you're in the trading business. You're in this business because you want to trade. You want to make this successful. You want to succeed. You want to, you want to, you want to make this a career. But you got to do it right. And these are like the orders. And that's why like when you see all these orders getting filled, 
right here at 440 and you wonder like, oh my God, how did the stock go from 440 up to $5? Well, did you see them get executed? Did you follow it? Did you see where all the other buyers were at that time? Because that's what drives the stock up. Not news, not Biden, not Trump, not Congress, not you or not me. It's the millions of shares out there that do it. All right. Any other stocks anyone wants me to look at? Anything else? Any other stocks out there? I'm glad there's a lot of people here. It's really good. Now, regarding about ETFs, that's a good question. Um, now, I don't trade ETFs uh, for, for a few reasons. First of all, when I look at an ETF, this is the problem. There's just so many orders going on that it's very hard to kind of distinguish where supports and resistance levels are. And I'll show you what I mean. I mean, TQQ is doing great. It's got a nice trend today, 25 to 26, but traded 117 million shares. All right. And when I look at it, I really can't dissect who's really getting in and out of it. Look, I'm still loading up data. That's how, that's how many orders are out there. Got a little more to go. Almost there. Oh, see? See what I'm saying? It is, it's kind of like it's kind of like a little bit of a mosh pit. So you got, I mean, you got some orders out here, like 332,000, but you could see like it's just it's not as clear than when I look at like this, you know? Big, big 200, quarter million, 600,000 share orders on the column right here on the right. Yeah, but sometimes the liquidity, you know, the clue is liquidity is awesome. You want the liquidity, but you also don't want to deal with, with um, algorithms in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Because from like 1030 till now, what did the stock really do? It moved about 20 cents. That seemed like a lot. It was good this, when you had this one. But all these, are, these are called shakes. And when you're in a shake like that, it's going to get you in. It's going to sucker you out and so on. Remember, you're in the business to risk the least amount of money with the high amount of reward. Once again, let me get back to real estate. There are towns I would never move my family to. You wouldn't and I wouldn't. And that's why we try to succeed and do better in life. So we could put our kids in better schools, you know, better areas, so on. Okay. You got to start somewhere. I'm not trying to knock anybody, but we all try to do better ourselves to succeed in life, to live a better life. That's the goal. But if I'm in the real estate business and I had an opportunity to buy a house in a bad neighborhood and knowing that I can make a lot of money on it is I'm not going to use my personal feelings to say, I don't care how much money I'm making. I'm not buying there. That's a bad real estate um, uh, entrepreneur. No problem. Thank you very much, uh, Naski. I appreciate it. Telling me you're right, Fausto. Listen, it just these are things that you learn over the years, you know. Uh, and what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to teach people like you, so you could join my trading room. You know, listen, trading is not a full time job; it's a part time job. You just got to know how to play the game. That's all. All right. Any other questions? By the way, um, I know some, a lot of you guys are asking me, you know, how do I get involved? Um, here's the link. I'm just going to give you the link right there. Everybody got a phone? Um, just take your phone and just take a picture of that. And all of you, I'm going to give you one week in my trading room. And, you know, like I said, just register, tell me a little bit about you, and we'll get you in there. All right? That's basically, you can go to the website, but the scanning is probably going to bring you right there. I don't know if we change it on the homepage and stuff. But, um, but I'm, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to give everyone a free trial to get into the trading room. Listen, th the worst thing that can happen to you is, is you find out trading is not for you. And that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. All right? I'm going to move this over to the side. Um, any other any other stocks anybody wants to look at? Listen, lucky I would keep an eye on it because it's really holding here pretty strong. And this seller just got executed. 
It keeps testing them. There's another seller showed up for 16,000 here on the right, but you could see it right there. Is that a stock? I, I, I? Yeah, I guess so. I would never trade this stock. Absolutely not. 100,000 shares? No, Ed, definitely not. Not really what you want to look at. You know what was a good mover? AI. AI moved pretty nicely. Um, we were trading this stock right around here, around 13. I sold the stock too cheap. A little, a little upset with myself. I got in right around, I got to run around 17, 18, right around that range. Uh, I did a swing trade on this one, not more of a day trade. It ended up being a day trade. And then all of a sudden, the stock was just trading so strong. I said, you know what? I like this stock. And sure enough, it went up. But um, sometimes I don't like to trade stocks that go up too fast because it's just a matter of time when they're going to take, a, you know, take a, a correction to the downside. You know? What, what else was moving this morning? So listen, there were a lot of stocks that are moving this morning. And let me just tell you the difference between like why we would trade a stock like Lucky and versus a stock like the second biggest percentage gainer, like TNNX. So the stock is trending down. I mean, it's up literally 65%. You're like, oh my God, it's up a lot. Yeah, that was, you know what it was at 9 a.m.? It was probably 165%. Um, stock had a big run-up. So, you know, once again, I know a lot of you look at this big percentage gainers and losers, but you don't know how to kind of like pick and choose the ones you want to and one you want. Now, Plug, on the other hand, we were trading Plug for a long time, and, and, and Plug um, is moving pretty nicely. Um, let's see the other one, Plug, and there's the other one that trades side by side with it. Uh, was it, not Plug, Plug, what the hell is the other one? There's two of them that trade. There's one that's cheaper than this one. Uh, Fcell, that's it. Fcell trades, Fcell trades with it also. Um, a little bit cheaper, a little bit less expensive. Yeah, these stocks are actually doing pretty well. They uh, took a big hit. You could see, you know, long term, they've done pretty. I mean, F cell was up in the 40s. Plug was up in the 70s. But yeah, they've been. They plug's a little bit more risky to trade. They got some good orders out there to kind of trade. They got good volatility, good volume, 11 million shares. Absolutely. Um, Faust, I registered, uh, can you give us a good trading example today from your, um, seven? Well, listen, I was done trading, you know, I was done trading, you know, um, after Carvana. So that's why I'm here. But like, I mean, there's a student right here. You could see. Elizabeth, um, she made about a dollar, made a dollar sixty from six twenty, uh, trading GNS. This stock moved pretty good. You can see GNS. Literally, she owned it right here. She did pretty well on that stock. Um, GNS. I mean, this stock we were trading it for the last couple of days. The stock, believe it or not, was thirty four cents in January. <laughs> this damn thing is already up at seven dollars. What is that? Fourteen hundred percent. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I mean, this stock, if you look at it, when it went public, it was up almost to 35 and just got destroyed. But I would rather, listen, Nakis, just to let you know, the stock market's not going out of business. Um, when you register, and I'll put that link in there again for everyone here. When you register, uh, Right here, I'll give you the link. Uh, there's a couple of tutorials we're going to give you. And, you know, we don't want you to kind of like go out there and just register and just go into the trading room and scan. I have a couple of uh, videos I want you guys to watch. And also, you're all going to get access to talk to one of our education advisors so they can at least give you kind of assistance. And they're not here to sell you anything. We're just here to, you know, kind of do, a, do our vet process. Because we don't want anybody to trade. It's not for them. Believe me, I put more fear in God in people because I've seen so many people blow up their accounts than actually help their accounts, you know? So that's where it comes in. So don't worry about scanning. I mean, scanning is easy. I mean, when we scan, 
And we find, and we go through these big percentage gainers. We'll, we'll show you what makes one tradable or not. I mean, this one's moving pretty nicely. Nice little push. A nice little trend here. Not bad. Tier size a little small, though. You know, hundreds and five hundreds. Uh, JNS got some good volatility, up 40%. SI looks like it's dead right now. It's done for the day. Mm, Carvana looks like it's pretty much done. Keep an eye on Carvana. It's holding it pretty strong. For a stock that had some great volatility, it looks pretty strong. All right. Any other questions? WeWorks actually also, too. We were, we were trading WeWorks this morning. Um, I did point that out to my traders in the room. I said, you know, WeWorks was about a dollar. I was actually talking about this this morning. So funny, it came back up again. It's the fourth biggest percentage gainer. And it looks like it, 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 once it got past this like dollar eighty, now you can see it's already at two forty. Now, for some of you, I like to trade cheap stocks. Um, I hope that people don't get offended by that. I just feel like why should I spend a lot? Listen, if this stock moves fifty cents on a thousand shares, at fifty cents at a thousand, it's five hundred. It's a hundred thousand dollars, right? If you do that, if you make fifty cents on I don't know. Facebook, you got to risk one hundred ninety thousand dollars to do that. I'd rather risk less with more reward. It's all, and, and you know what? A lot of us probably don't have that much money to go buy a thousand shares of Facebook. You probably have enough to buy a thousand shares of WeWorks, you know. And you don't want to make sure you get caught up in that option thing. Like, well, I can't afford Facebook. Let me trade the option. So that's you know. But then then you're looking at. It's a lot more riskier when you trade that option. Sometimes you don't have to. You could just trade the stock. Shopify, you know, Shopify has been having a really good move, Mohammed. Um, Shopify has been doing really well. The stock took a big hit. It's been, it, it hasn't, it's not the easiest stock to day trade, but it's been a pretty good swing trade. I've been seeing a lot of buyers keep bidding it up now all of a sudden. So that, that's been, uh, that's been, look like it's doing pretty well. Uh, listen, it broke through a major resistance level, it was around 50. I mean, looking at the long term, it looks like it can get close to the 60 now if it continues. But day trading, I would not, very kind of hard. Once in a while, we day trade it, but not all the time. Now it's getting a little expensive. We used to day trade it, was down here around the 25s and around the 32s, something like that. All right. Um, oops, what I do here? There we go. All right. Any other stocks, anyone? Any other stocks? So uh, what do you got? You got the next presenters coming in at 12 o'clock, all right? So I'll give you some guys. I'll be done probably in the next five minutes. So I'll give you guys some time to go digest, register, and so on. Um, stock right here, E-U-R-L. <laughs> I would never trade this stock. Are you just grabbing stocks out of like out of a wall? I would never trade this stock. Stock has seventy three thousand shares. It hasn't done absolutely any nothing all day. And yeah, it moved up. I mean, like if you had it back in October, you did pretty well. But overall, this is not a stock I would consider trading. There's no volatility in it. BBAI. So. We trade BBAI, but it hasn't really been moving as much. I mean, the party is pretty much over with this stock. Um, it's got some major resistance levels around $4. This, part, this stock, if you go back in our, and look at our Twitter and our Facebook page, we trade this stock about a week or two weeks ago, but right now it's done. You know, that party's over. So I don't know if you own it, but I'll be really careful, um, you know, as it. But you know what? If it, if it holds here for a while, I don't know what your game plan on it then it could consider breaking it, but it's got to break that four first. P-A-R-A, -A, great push, nice trend, decent volume. That's not a terrible stock. Um, but since 950 to now, it hasn't gone anywhere. I want to show everybody something. Everybody see this mouse pad? Okay, so I designed this mouse pad about 30 years ago. And if you look at the greens, you can see that's the best time to trade. You see the reds, the worst time to trade. And the blue is, is dead zone. So um, you could see by looking at the stock and then looking at this clock that you could see that any stock you look at, um, 
is when the action is versus the action is, you know, when the market dies out. You can always get this on our website. All right. Listen, trading is fun. It's great, but it sucks to lose. So, you know, with these winners and these stocks that you're looking at, that's not really should be a big concern right now. Your big concern is where should I get out of these positions? Where am I going wrong? You know, you have to know how to admit when you're wrong. I would probably say that out of all the people that are going to be presenting in these next couple of days, a lot of you are going to, a lot of them are going to say the same thing. They're all going to talk about why that strategy works good. You might like it, but we're all, and we, we'll disagree on why somebody said, oh no, options are better, Fibonacci is better, futures, but we'll all agree on one thing. Psychology and discipline is one of the biggest things that's going to teach you to be a good trader. And that's what you got to focus on. All right. So um, anyway, there's the link again. You know, I pretty much don't have any more to say other than let me invite you to the room and you can see it live. And, you know, we'll go from there. And then, you know what, then we'll make a decision. We'll have a conversation and see if this is something that's for you or not. But remember, you got to learn before you can earn. All right. Uh, David, you have anything else you want to add in or? Pretty much. Uh... I, uh, I, I can't think of anything. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of good info. Good, 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 good. I appreciate uh, you, it. You mentioned that the, um, when you started, how you've been, you know, doing my events for a long time. And uh, I was, makes me think of uh, right after I, I started these events, the, the original series, uh, you and I got to see each other in person out in Vegas. I, this is probably 2016, maybe. It, it was, I, and, I remember that. I, I remember that day. I think it was it Vegas or was it New York? Um, yeah, it was definitely Vegas because uh, okay. I, I haven't been to the New York shows. Um, but uh, yeah, it this was, was just kind of a side project back then for me. Right. And I was just doing the Monday shows, and and you you came up to me and said how much you loved the format and loved doing the events, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know I thought, wow, if Fausto is enjoying this, I I really should. Uh, really should expand this <laughs> so you, you know what here, here we I, are years later <laughs> well you know what I, I i respect what you're doing and you know and i and anything like i'm an educator and i don't like to hold anything back but when it comes to you know when i do those events and i do and I, we met the money show and stuff like you know what it is you sat in the audience you see some of these people and they're just like you know, I'm like, you tell them like, listen, if I was really, if I want to be honest with you, you should not be trading. You should not be trading unless you can do it right. And I always go yeah. back to the brain surgeons, you know, like, would you want a brain surgeon? If you had to get brain surgery, anyone you love ones, for someone ever went to med school, ever learned anything, well, what do you think you're doing? Or would you give your money to finance to someone who never learned finance? You know, mm -hmm. how about this? I'll even yeah. do it even better. I actually, I, this came up yesterday, uh, David. I told somebody that I was talking to someone the other day and I'm like, listen, here you are talking to me. You want to learn how to trade. If your friend comes up to you right now and says, Hey, listen, Oh, you trade in the market. Can I give you a hundred grand? Could you trade my money for me? What would you say? Okay. And she be, at first thing she said, I wouldn't accept that. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, exactly. So what do you think you're doing with your own money? You don't even want to accept someone else's money. Cause you're not even confident. You can help them make money. What makes you think that you could even trade your own? Mm -hmm. So you know what? I could trade anyone's money, but when it comes to me, I'm like, why, why would I want to split the profits? I'll keep all the profits for myself. Let me just teach you how to do it on your own. You know what I mean? And then we'll make money together. That's really what the goal is. So that's what everyone here has to understand that, you know, you got to learn before you can earn and you got to surround yourself with good traders and you got to know how to play the game that people do it all day long. And that's, what's going to help you become very good at this industry. So you know, but I'm always, it, it, and that's why it was great meeting you there. And that's why I'm, I'm constantly doing with you. Um, you know, whenever my time allows me to, I love coming on your show because I love you know, helping people out here to make them think before they make the mistake, you know, mm -hmm. but um, all right, I'm going to get back uh, to my trading. Anyway, thanks Dave for having me. There's the link, everyone just scan it, whatever it is. And then I look forward to, you know, seeing you all in the trade room, Dave. So uh, good luck with your, your, your event for the next couple of days and look forward to the next one. All right. Thank, thanks, Fausto.